The MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro powered by Apple's own chip M1 are great laptops. However, Apple moving to a different processor architecture that is from Intel to M1 means that some of the apps that you might be using in your Intel based MacBook Air may not work in the M1 chip. In this video, I'm going to take you through all of the apps that I use every day in my M1 MacBook Air and also talk a little bit about how apps do work in the M1 chip so that you as a user can keep using your apps even though you're moving from Intel based MacBook Air to the 2020 MacBook Air powered by Apple's M1 chip. Talking about the apps, some apps are going to be really quick and support the M1 chip. In fact, most of the apps that I use today in my M1 MacBook Air do support the native M1 chip. There are a few apps that don't today and they're going to take that time. They probably want to take more time to make sure that their app runs efficiently in the M1 chip. Until then, what we users can do is we can still keep using those apps. How is that possible? Well, Apple has a new translation engine called Rosetta 2 that comes with your M1 MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro. If you have an app that does not support the native M1 chip, you will get an option to install this Rosetta 2 engine that once installed now will let you run all those apps that are not yet supporting the M1 chip as well. Now all of your apps that you were using in your previous Intel based MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro will magically just work in your M1 MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. That's the promise Apple is delivering with their Rosetta 2 engine. And it's very crucial that Apple gets this right because this is going to be their key in moving their hardware, all of their hardware in fact, from the Intel based to the M series chip. Because if the apps don't work, then people are not going to buy the laptops, right? So that's why the Rosetta engine is very crucial for the success of the M1 laptops. So enough of the background information, right? Let's talk about the app compatibility. I have been using this M1 MacBook Air as my primary machine for over a month now. And I have installed all of the apps that I usually use in my Intel based MacBook Pro, which I still have in my M1 MacBook Air. Surprisingly, all of the apps work really well in my M1 MacBook Air. I did not expect that, to be honest. I thought there could be some small issues or hiccups when running an app that does not support the native M1 chip, but the Apple's Rosetta engine has managed to make it work really well. Of course, the apps I use in my M1 MacBook Air could be very different to the apps that you are using, and maybe you have one or two apps that may not work. If you have an app that is not working properly yet in your M1 MacBook Air, then do let me know in the comments below. The easiest way to start looking at app compatibility is asking yourself this question. Do you use a lot of Apple's own apps like Safari for browsing, photos for viewing all of the photos that you have, Apple Music to listen to your favorite music, notes to take notes, calendar app, and Apple's own office suite, the Pages and the Keynote apps, or even the Pro apps like Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro and Motion. The good news is that they all have support for Apple's native M1 chip. Of course, they are Apple's own app. It makes sense that Apple updated their app to support the native M1 chip from day one. So if you are in the Apple's ecosystem of apps, you will not find any issues moving from Intel based MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro to the M1 chip MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. If you're not using those apps and using other apps like Chrome, Firefox for browsing the internet or the productivity app suite from Microsoft Office or OneDrive or Dropbox for syncing your files, that is when you have to look for if those apps support the native M1 chip or not. But again, as a user, Apple is making sure that you shouldn't be worrying about that because of the magical Rosetta 2 engine they have that is just going to run those apps in your MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro with the native M1 chip. Let's start with browsers. 
my primary browser is Safari. And when I do need other browsers at times when I need to test some things, I do use Microsoft Edge and Firefox. The Safari browser, as we saw before, is optimized for the M1 chip. The Firefox is also optimized for M1 chip, whereas the Microsoft Edge browser that you would download from their website is not yet. But if you download the Canary version, which is a very unstable version, so I wouldn't recommend you do that, but if you download the Canary version, you do get support for the M1 chip. Now, of course, if you are using Chrome, you can also download Chrome for the M1 chip as well. The way you do that is you go to the Google Chrome website and then if you download Chrome, you will get an option to choose the version for Mac with Intel chip or the Mac with Apple chip. The Mac with Apple chip will give you the support for the M1 version. So it's a bit confusing, but it works for now for users that are advanced and want to specifically run the M1 chip version. Whereas if you go to Firefox, it's very simple. When you download Firefox, it automatically includes the support for M1 chip. So you don't have to choose between the Intel versus the Apple Silicon option you got for downloading the Chrome browser. Next to browsers, I have my Office apps. So I have installed the Microsoft Office suite of apps, the Outlook, OneNote, PowerPoint, Word, Excel, and also the primary sync client I use for my storage, which is OneDrive. Now, if you are using Google Drive, do note that Google Drive has been having issues with the M1 chip since day one. There's been a lot of discussions around whether Google has a fix yet or not, but if you are using Google Drive, that may not work yet properly with your M1 chip. Next up are some very useful utilities that I use every day. So one password I use for my password management. App Zapper is an excellent tool if you want to uninstall apps in your Mac. And then I have this tiny stopwatch, which I really like. So it's basically a menu bar app where you can start and stop timers. I have this Airview app that changes the background automatically for my uh, desktop. I have Bartender to clean up the menu bar. And then I have my, uh, you know, of course, the Apple Home app, the speed test app, and a Silicon Info app, which is very useful if you want to know what version of the app or you know, what architecture of the app is running, to be very specific, whether it's Apple Silicon or the Intel version of the app. I have the window management tool, Magnet, that allows me to use some shortcuts to move windows around different displays or maximize a window, minimize a window, things like that. I have ItsyCal. This is a very, very useful tool, something that I install every time um, so that I can get a good uh, in time and date in the menu bar. Adblock Plus, Calculator, iStat Menus, very useful things that I have here that I use every day in my MacBook Air. Now, um, some of the apps here you see are not optimized for M1, like the AirView uh, app is not optimized, ItsyCal is not optimized, but they all run really well. For example, let's look at the ItsyCal app. So here's the ItsyCal. This is a tiny app that sits in your Mac menu bar. And when you click on it, it gives you a calendar and also options to have the year, the month, the date in the menu bar. So something that I like better than Apple's option. So I changed the Apple's option to just show only the time, while I use this ItsyCal app to show me the calendar year and date um, that is very useful for me. And again, you can have your events coming up, you can connect all of your calendars. So it's really powerful and something I install every time I reset my Mac. Here's the bartender app in my menu bar. So this little icon here, when I click on it, I'm going to see all of the other hidden items. And it's very useful to organizing your menu bar and something I do every time because the number of apps that put their icons in the menu bar is always growing. So it's always good to have a tool that can help you organize and just see the things that you wanna see and hide the rest. So moving along, I have some writing apps. I use Grammarly a lot, I love it. I have MindNote, a mind mapping tool, Bear app for 
some simple writing and of course the Apple's default text edit app. Now all of these apps except for Grammarly are optimized for M1. And then I have my photography tools and apps that I use starting with Apple's Photos app, Pixelmator Pro, Darkroom and just the import tool that Apple has the image capture tool. Now of course um, the Darkroom and Pixelmator Pro, I mix and match them when I want to do some advanced photo editing. I use the Pixelmator Pro and when I want to use some filters and, you know, fine tune the parameters of an image, I use Darkroom a lot as well for quick editing. Pixelmator Pro is always a little bit advanced. Moving on from photos, the next uh, apps that I use are for my content creation. So I have Final Cut Pro, the key app that I use and this M installer, which is a series of plugins I use for my Final Cut Pro. Now the M installer is not optimized for M1 chip. It runs again using the Rosetta engine that I was talking earlier. But Final Cut Pro is, is really good. It's heavily optimized for the M1 chip and you're gonna find it amazing um, using it with your M1 chip. Of course, along with the apps that I use for uh, my news, I also have the music app that I use, Spotify. I really love Spotify. Um, however, Spotify is not optimized for the M1 chip. It is running using the Rosetta engine that you have. And then the usual FaceTime messages, maps, calendar apps that I do use from time to time. Um, and especially if you have your iPhone connected to your Mac, then you can use the FaceTime and messages app um, very efficiently. So you don't have to take up your iPhone, just use your Mac to send and receive messages and phone calls. Now, one thing I did not go over was the fact that the M1 chips can run iOS and iPad apps. How is that possible? Well, the processor architecture of the A series chips that Apple uses in their iPhone and iPads are very similar to the M series chips, that is the M1 that Apple uses in the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. So it's able to run iOS apps and iPad apps, but it's really not that good. Now, I wouldn't recommend you to go download and use those iOS apps because they are really not good. And something that probably Apple will make some really good updates in the coming years. Let me go ahead and show you an example. In the news app, I have installed uh, the Axios app, which is an iPad app that I use for news. Now, if I start this app, you can see it's pretty good. It's giving me the same interface that I'm very familiar with this app when I'm browsing the iPad, but it just doesn't look native to my Mac. And one of the most frustrating things with these iOS apps in Mac is the fact that you're unable to resize the app and take advantage of all of the window management tools that you have in your Mac. For example, I really can't resize this app. I can only resize to the landscape mode, which is what you're seeing right now, or the portrait mode, which is what you're seeing right now. And this really matches up to your iPad usage, right? So you're gonna use your iPad in portrait or in the landscape mode. And that's what this does and which is really not something I would expect the apps to behave this way in my Mac. So while the future looks really good and Apple is starting up to bring these uh, iOS and iPad apps to your Mac, I think Apple has a long way to go to make these something usable by everyone. So let's go back to that Silicon Info app I was talking about. If you want to know what architecture the app is built and running in your Mac, so for example, if I open my Spotify, remember Spotify is not optimized for M1 chip, it's running using the Rosetta engine. So if I go to my Silicon Info app, which is in the menu bar, you can see that Spotify is running in Intel 64 bit. So a very handy tool to look at those information if you want to know what processor architecture your app is running. Now let's go ahead and open Firefox, right? So Firefox is indeed optimized for the M1 chip. Now, if I go ahead and look at the Silicon Info, it does shows you that it is the ARM64 version, which is the Apple Silicon processor architecture. So those were all of the apps I use in my M1 MacBook Air. And you can see that 
most of the apps that I have been using, I have no trouble using them in the M1 MacBook Air. As you saw, some apps do support the native M1 chip and some do not. While for the apps that don't support the M1 chip, the Rosetta engine is doing a really good job running them in my M1 MacBook Air. So if you have an M1 MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, I would like to know what apps you're using and what apps are working for you and not working for you. Do let me know in the comments. If you enjoy my video, do press the like button. And for more videos, do subscribe to my channel. Until next time, bye.